January the 25th, 2016, to order. And I will ask for us to pause at the moment of silence in our tradition. Thank you. And Jay Farrell, would you lead us in the sure. Pledge of Allegiance? Everyone rise for pledge. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you. We have three items on the consent agenda. Are there any changes to the consent agenda for the removal or addition of any items? If not, may I get a motion to approve the consent agenda, which, in <laughs> thank you, which includes the minutes of January the 11th, a financial summary uh, for last fiscal year, and an amendment to the operating budget. Second. Moved by Michael Fiocco and seconded by Pam Baldwin um, to approve this consent agenda of three items. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, votes for a five to zero. I've been notified that there is a change in the regular agenda uh, regular meeting agenda tonight and that change is that the matter on Davy Street um, has been uh, withdrawn for this evening and so I'd ask the board if we could approve the regular agenda with the exception of the Davy Street um, matter. Is there such a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Michael Fiocco, seconded by Bet. Wilson Foley to approve the regular agenda with the deletion of the Davy Street um, matter. Those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, five to zero. Citizen matters is next on the agenda. I don't know, Deborah White is, um, because the matter has been withdrawn on Davy Street, if you care to continue with your public expression. Yeah, I just, I just have a, a question for the board, and that question is, is there a rule on in the whatever that there should be a certain number of feet as far as frontage to property? And specifically, since this is not on the agenda tonight, it's been withdrawn, I'd like to know if that applies to the pocket neighborhoods, the frontage requirements. Jeff Jones is the planner. Could you get with Deborah White to be able to discuss those? I've consulted with Deborah so far today already with that Okay. And if necessary, Paul. Do you know what the answer to that is? I do not myself. Paul Would you Mettin? like to hear the answer? Um, how does the board feel about engaging in this particular matter? Very brief. I don't have a problem. Okay. The board has no problem hearing briefly about the matter. Thank you, Mayor, members of the board. Um, the, the Davy Street project, this pocket neighborhood, um, was removed from the agenda tonight. Current staff um, doing its job and its due diligence through the review process of that of that project. Um, is evaluating that project against all the ordinances of the town, and I think there is a um, there's an issue with the subdivision ordinance and how much uh, street frontage each lot that is created through the subdivision ordinance must have. Um, these lots currently do not have that requirement, so there is an issue that staff and the applicant have to work through. Uh, to get this project back before you, if it comes back before you, in its current form. Let me let me understand that the current ordinance does not have a front setback. It, it does. 
Yes, there is a there is a, each lot that's created in the town of Pittsburgh has to have street frontage. Has to be created on a, on a street. This this project and other projects of this of this kind do not have street frontage for each lot that's created. So there's a there's an issue that we need to work through with the applicant. That that's plain and simple. The subdivision ordinance requires the lots that are platted in the town of Pittsburgh to have street frontage. Do these lots have street frontage? I don't I don't think so, but that's that's for us to, to worry about when that project com comes back before you, if it comes back before you in, in that in that form. Because the applicant's not here, I don't really want to do that case, but the he will not. Okay. Yeah, are there any exceptions to that rule? There are four exceptions, um, and those four exceptions generally talk about family subdivisions, rural subdivisions, uh, there is an exception for plan unit developments in PDDs where an exception to the current uh, town standards for roads can, can be had. Um, and there is another uh, exemption. It escapes me at the moment, but those four exemptions to that requirement, in staff's opinion, do not apply in this case. So we're going to have to work that through with the applicant and staff here. And if, like I said, if it comes back, come back and may come back on a different form. But we'll, we'll um, keep the board up to date on that. Okay. Are there further questions from the board? Thank you. Thank you. We've moved on the agenda, the uh, category of commissioner updates. And um, the reason for doing that was so that we could talk about the kinds of meetings that we had been to since our last board meeting. Um, our last board meeting was the 11th of January, and, um, and I will start. I'm not sure how active everybody else's agendas were given the holidays and the weather, but um, um, the day after our last meeting, I attended a Economic Development Corporation meeting um, on the 14th of January. I met briefly with the folks at Chatham Park to convey to them our desire to have quarterly updates on their project, and um, that was greeted with um, uh, with uh, uh, very keen approval. Um, on the 16th, I attended the NAACP Martin Luther King breakfast in Siler City. On the 19th, NCDOT was offering a very interesting uh, webinar regarding um, pedestrian safety and bike safety that I would like to uh, at some point bring to the um, attention of the Chief of Police and others uh, for possible sponsorship um, or participation by Chatham County and Pittsburgh in that North Carolina DOT program. On the 20th of January, I met with Congressman David Price, as chief, chief of staff. On the 21st, I um, attended the um, sludge discussion that uh, Elaine Chioso and members of the Chatham County Conservation Group uh, spoke about when they were here at the January 11th meeting. Um, so uh, Elaine Chioso made a very in-depth uh, presentation on the sludge report that she handed out to all of us that evening and as well a scientist regarding the um, uh, the 1,4 dioxane um, uh, con possible contamination in the uh, in the Pittsburgh water source also spoke at that meeting. And then on Friday night um, intrepid Dan Perry and I went out to Northwood High School to um, uh, the people who were uh, taking care of anybody who might need uh, shelter for the night and, um, and and just brought greetings from the town of Pittsburgh. So um, I know that um, others have, have been to other meetings and uh, John Bonnets, I believe you've been to uh, an educational session. Would you like to um, talk briefly Thank about Thank you, Mayor, for asking. I did attend the uh, UNC Chapel Hill School of Government training 
on essentials of municipal government. It was a two-day training. And um, chock full. Uh, I, I didn't, didn't uh, try to summarize what all I learned, but um, it, was, uh, it was engaging, uh, really stimulating. Um, let's see. I think there was one thing that actually I could share. Um, I'm trying to remember the shape of it now. It was on the second day, and it had to do with the uh, finances. Oh, it was really, really startling to me to learn that in cases of conflict of interest, the law is very clear about uh, recusing oneself, but North Carolina has unique law. Well, maybe not unique, but it's, it was a surprise to me, and I w had never heard of this before, that... Uh, uh, it's, it's called a hold your feet to the fire policy, and it requires that elected officials must vote on it even if they feel there is a conflict of interest. Unless you meet the strict definition of the law's conflict of interest, one cannot opt out of a vote, say, because your cousin owns property on a, adjacent to a zoning matter. Um, and uh, I spent a good hour with my head just reeling, trying to understand that, that um, our legislature has decided that it is uh, in the public good to require elected officials to vote on matters, even if they individually feel that they should, should recuse themselves. Um, but again, those cases where one must recuse oneself are very clearly laid out in the law. Are there other members of the board who have attended meetings or um, have matters to bring to our attention? Um, I'm, I get to share something. I'm a vice president of the Trenton County Arts Council, and I just got a report that the Arts Council is going to be moving into a new space, which is very exciting. It's going to have a very public forefront across uh, from Highway 64, um, actually near the old planning office. Um, anyway, I'll give you all update on that, but that's very exciting for the Arts Council. Also, I was just going to mention there was a couple of um, just for businesses that were in the news this week, and I thought that was worth mentioning. Um, you all might have heard of the movie Revenant, which has gotten um, I would guess her in the nominations, 12 Oscar nominations. Um, the tools that were used in that movie came from a local business here in Pittsburgh, which is pretty cool. And also another business that um, has taken an old vintage trailer um, has turned it into a mobile um, vintage wedding uh, consulting business. And uh, so that got right up in the news observer. So it's just kind of fun to hear about these Pittsburgh businesses getting written up uh, in triangle-wide uh, publications. And that's all I have right now. And thank you, Beth, for updating the Pittsburgh Facebook page, because every time I go on there, there's something new and exciting about what's happening in Pittsburgh, and it's wonderful. Uh, I am uh, typically attending the Pittsburgh Business Association meeting, and the last meeting was really just a review of the previous year, a very successful year, um, and everybody's geared up and ready to get cracking on a, on a new year, and there's a lot of excitement and a lot of progress. Uh, also attend the ABC board meetings, and uh, Jim Nass <coughs> chair is here this evening to bring us good news, uh, as they've continued to bring us good news for the last several years under his guidance. Um, and that's it. And I know Pamela Baldwin is the delegate and Michael Fiocco the alternate for um, Triangle J Council of Governments. Have you all met this month? It is scheduled for Wednesday. So uh, basically anyone can attend, even though I am the delegate and my sister Austin, and Wednesday is actually the orientation for, so that everyone can, that the new delegates and those returning can get an inf information session about, again, what Triangle J is about and all of that. So I will be attending that on Wednesday. Well, that's all I have. If there's nothing further, then let's move then to the public hearing. We need to have a motion to go into public hearing. Second. Second. Moved by Matt Wilson Foley, seconded by Michael Fiocco to go into public hearing. And 
Jeff, I believe that uh, we'd like to hear from you regarding the matter. Thank you, Mayor, members of the board. We have a rezoning before you tonight. It's on Mount Zion Road. It's 480 Mount Zion Road, and the screen will be coming up here shortly. Um, this is the parcel. It's a uh, the rezoning is for 15.61 acres. It's a large of a larger piece of property, uh, 32 acres in size. The existing zoning is split. It's a uh, M2 heavy industrial and RA residential agricultural. Proposed uh, Bethman is proposing to rezone the property into its entirety uh, RA residential agricultural. Uh, generally, the surrounding area um, to the north and um, west is split zoning with M, uh, M2 to the north, heavy industrial, um, as part of the Pittsburgh Place development. Uh, to the west uh, is split between M2 and RA. To the east, uh, PDD, land owned by Chatham Park Investors. And to the south, this property is, uh, properties are zoned RA, residential agricultural. Um, a little history behind the, the, the zoning in this area. As I can gather, back in the early 90s, a request to rezone most of this area that's in the pink and purple to heavy industrial was, uh, was applied to by, the, by an applicant uh, for spe uh, speculative uh, industrial sites. The property was eventually sold to the current owner in 1995. Um, they proceeded to build a home on this piece of property, essentially in the M2 area of the of the property, um, and have been lit has been living in on this property for the last 20 or so years. Um, the area in this uh, this is the future land use plan. You can see the star. Scroll back. Um, has an industrial then medium residential. Um, essentially, the, the area, again, is split by industrial and medium residential. Uh, the future land use plan essentially follows the, the zoning map that we have in place or had in place at the time that the future land use plan was adopted. Uh, the applicant, again, is, is requesting that we go to residential for this entire track. Um, current zoning, again, is split. The RA district would provide for land primarily for low density residential development in transitional areas located on the periphery of urbanizing Pittsburgh. Um, this staff's recommendation is to approve the amendment to the, to the zoning map. Um, while not entirely consistent with the future land use plan because we have the split zone, the split designation here between industrial and medium residential, uh, staff's opinion that going to entirely residential fits with the nature of the use of how the property is being used at, at this current time. Plan board did hear this matter at their public meeting of December 7th and discussed the re recommendation on the proposed rezoning. Plan board essentially agreed with staff that this uh, doesn't necessarily fit with the future land use plan, but it is, it is in the best interest of the property owner in the town of Pittsburgh to rezone this entire tract to residential agricultural and made the recommendation to do so. Um, you can hold the public hearing at this time, and I can answer any questions that you may have. Applin is here if you have any questions for me. Is there testimony to come before the board with regard to this rezoning request? Mr. and Ms. Ogle are here, I see, and do um, you all care to make a statement? I'm sorry, I could... Do you care to make a statement? Um, the property is uh, residential agricultural right now, has been for back as far as anybody can remember. So. We're just asking to zone it as it is being used so that if something happened to our house, we could rebuild it where it is today. Anybody else wish to speak to the Ogle rezoning? 
Jeff, what is the status of the use? Is it a non-conforming use? Or so essentially, as I shared with the Ogles back, probably one of the first uh, <coughs> things, they, probably some of the first visitors I, I had when I started back in October, um, was the question that they were they were a little surprised that their property was split split zone between heavy industrial and residential, and the question came up as uh, Mr. Ogle uh, alluded to just a few minutes ago, a few moments ago, that um, if his home were to be damaged beyond repair, would he be able to be to rebuild? And I answered, I don't think you would, because in heavy industrial single-family homes are not an allowed use. Um, and so his desire to rezone his property to allow for residential component to continue on as he sees fit, um, a rezoning would have to take place, and that's where we are today. There's no one signed up to speak any further. Is there a motion then for us to go out of public hearing on this matter? Go ahead. Okay. I'd like to ask a question uh, it, it, reading through what are the, the goals of the heavy industrial use or zoning, it talks about having frontage on rail or a major thoroughfare. This property has neither, right? Um, so to the south and to the east, this property is residential. The other north and the west is heavy industrial. Yes. And I think it adjoins Grove Century, is that correct? I'm sorry. Yes. 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 I, think, I think that's correct. Is that Robeson to the north? It, it does join Robeson Creek. Yeah. And then there's another stream on the western side. That is correct. So there's this nat these two natural barriers. Yes. Sir. Yeah. So. I believe it's Turkey Creek on the okay. western side. Yeah. Again, this was a speculatively zoned area back in the early to mid 90s that. Uh, I guess a property owner or two or three uh, thought that this would be a good place for an industrial park. That obviously didn't pan out. The Ogles bought uh, 32 acres of land from. This this is a creek here on yep. this boundary. I believe they call it Turkey Creek, and then this is Robinson Creek. Park. Is that a utility easement? This. This is a utility easement. Yes. That, that's Duke what Energy. provides the, the zoning line. The zoning line it the pretty much does, yeah. yes. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Bonnet, you had a question? Yes. Uh, Mr. You. Bonnet, could you lower your mic? Uh, Mr. Jones, I'm curious if you could elaborate for me, please, just a little bit more on how it is that this may not be entirely consistent with the future land use map, and I apologize. Yeah. Um, so needed education on yeah. that. No, the future land use plan has the property split designated between industrial and medium residential, much like the zoning map has, and that when the folks who were crafting the future land use plan looked at our current zoning map, where the town is currently zoned for heavy industrial, for residential and generally took that uh, zoning map and, and looked at future de designations. Zoning is there. We, it would be able to be able to used as heavy industrial or, or residential so the crafters of the future land use plan looked at the zoning map and for the most part took that and put a designation of future use to that land. Um, the future use being in this case, split between heavy industrial and residential. Um, there's not a request to change the future land use plan. I think once we kind of get through a process of the UDO, I think staff is going to take that, ta that task on next, is to look at our comprehensive plan or, or get a comprehensive plan uh, more fine for, for Pittsburgh. And we'll start looking at some of those designations and not looking solely at what it's currently zoned, but what do we want in Pittsburgh for that area to be? Not obviously, it's not going to be industrial, um, and residential may be more appropriate uh, in this location. So that that's that's one of the things. It's just a holdover from what we had zoning back in the 90s and the future land use plan that was written that sort of just fought. It followed the the designations and the zoning. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 
the board have further questions? Thank you. I have just one question. And it's really nothing regarding the rezoning, but uh, I guess it's kind of like just being a good neighbor. But uh, if I'm not mistaken, is Mr. Ogle, are you on the lawsuit against the town? No longer, sir. No longer. Okay. Thank you. That's all the question I have. Is there a motion to go out of public hearing? So moved. Michael Fiacco moved and second. That motion fully seconded. <coughs> Those in favor of the motion to go out of public hearing, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Five to zero. Now we'd entertain a motion on the rezoning request itself. If there's no further discussion, is there a motion? to approve or deny Mr. Ogle's request for rezoning. Motion to approve the request for rezoning. I don't believe that's on the agenda. Yeah. You can't have it, Mayor. Yeah, I can't so have it. Have yeah, we yeah. Have a, we, it would come back as old business at the next at the meeting next at the 8th, okay. and we'll have an ordinance for you at that time. That's right. I remember. Drafted. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Given the testimony, then we'll move to old business, the first of which is a mid-year update from James Nass and the uh, look forward to hearing about the ABC. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Mayor. Commissioners, it's a pleasure to be here again. Uh, on behalf of uh, Ned Kelly and Hugh Harrington, my fellow board members, I want to give you a half-year update on where we stand in the uh, ABC score here in town. Uh, revenues overall are up 9.9, almost 10% over the six months, first half of the year last year. Um, our uh, retail sales are up exactly that 9.9%. Mixed beverages, not quite as much, 8.7%. 8, 8 Mixed beverages is, are the, uh, is the liquor that we sell to restaurants, et cetera, to resell uh, through their permits to, to customers. And so we're watching that one. We were, would hope that that was growing just a little bit faster and more in line with our retail sales. Uh, but overall, we're very pleased. We're at slightly over $700,000 in revenue for the first six months of, uh, of this year. Um, Expense-wise, uh, we'd like to look at expenses minus taxes simply because the taxes are directly related to how much uh, liquor we sell. And, for example, uh, in this six months, we paid $46,000 in in uh, liquor tax and $153,000 in excise tax. So around $200,000 in, in, in taxes. And that fluctuates up if we sell more and down if we were to sell less. So if we take those taxes out, it allows us to look at expenses uh, that are controllable uh, to, a, to a large extent. And in that regard, we're 6.5% over uh, where we were at this point six, uh, last year. However, last year, we were not providing health benefits for our full-time employees. And this year, we've spent uh, $8,893 proudly to give our full-time employees uh, health benefits for the first time. And so if we take that money out and compare apples to apples, we're actually down about $2,000 on expenses, which the board feels is a tribute to our general manager, Nancy Gooch, and the staff in controlling expenses, and even though we're doing more business, and in controlling inventory, which is a very important part of keeping our, our costs in line and down. Um, another thing I would report that this year for the first time at Pittsburgh store, we worked with the uh, chief of police and we had off-duty officers at our facility on Christmas Eve and again on New Year's Eve. And with the large amount of business that we did during that time, we have gotten feedback from customers that they felt much more comfortable with the crowd that was in the store with that police presence there. And so uh, that worked out very well for us this year and I'm sure it's something we'll do in the future. And everyone had nothing but uh, great comments about the professionalism of the officers that were assigned, uh, which is pretty much what you hear about our Pittsburgh Police Department. Now at the end of the first quarter, we distributed checks to the town in the amount of $10,175. I wasn't able to make a presentation to the board at the end of that first quarter, so we handed those checks over to uh, Brian Grisbeck to uh, handle for us. Tonight, 
where I'm presenting checks to you for the second quarter in the amount of $12,505. So that will bring our six-month total to $22,680. And we're slightly above what we had budgeted last June in terms of our revenues, in terms of our expenses, and in terms of our uh, uh, checks, the distributions to the town. So uh, we especially want to thank the Board of Commissioners for supporting the ABC Board and for their quick action when we needed a new board member, and especially to Commissioner Fiocco, who is our liaison and attends all of our meetings and is a big help to us in uh, and, and, and helping us think through where we're at and where we're going. So, again, we're just very pleased with where we're at. Uh, last year was a great year, and yet we're still uh, growing at about 10% above that period. So we're so we're very happy with that. So I'd be glad to take any questions or any comments from the commissioners. Thank you, Jim. Are there questions from the board? Do you have a good work? I don't have a question, but thank you so much. I think you all are doing a great job. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for your good governance. Um, thank you very much. Well, at this time, then, I will uh, give these checks to you, Madam. Thank you very much. Thank you. thank you, Jim. The next matter is an update on the um, small, main, small Town Main Street program by Paul Horn. I didn't uh, introduce, as I had last time, uh, members of the staff that are with us today, but Paul Horn is the head of Parks and Recreation. Yes. Well, well, thank you. And Jim's a tough act to follow. I'm afraid I don't have a big check for you today. <laughs> 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 Uh, just wanted to give you a quick update on the Main Street program. We have been graced with Michael Fiocco's presence at those meetings, and he can um, fill you in further with the um, updates and the commissioner's uh, meetings, if you'd like. But we've had regular monthly meetings for the past four months, as well as some additional ones before that. And uh, we have a very focused group. One of the things we <coughs> synthesized the first meeting is that every time there's want to be there. They share a vision for the downtown being economically viable and more vibrant. And everybody's there because they want to be there, because they have a stake in it, and they're motivated to be there and, and um, see this common vision fulfilled. Um, to that end, last meeting we adopted a work plan which will turn uh, which will help focus the group on tangible, specific projects. Um, some of the highlights, this is not all inclusive, but some of the things we've um, scheduled for this year, and when I say this year, it's really till the end of the fiscal year, primarily. Um, so over the next six months, the group would like to host a, um, a dis window display design basics class where we'll have a designer come in and kind of um, offer to merchants downtown a principal's design of design for window displays. So, um, and then culminate that with kind of a hands-on makeover for one of the stores that wants to do that. So that um, relatively minor project, but one that can be fun and one that can make a big difference just for eye appeal with the town for visitors and tourists coming through to say, oh, that's an interesting store. And just that one second of uh, something engaging in a window can definitely draw people in and, and conversely if there's not that you know, might walk on by or never know that a store is offering something that's that's valuable um, if they don't see it in the window um, so um, in addition to that we're looking at engaging in a downtown branding process that is much more significant and we'll probably come back um, to you for a funding request for this item um, but that would be really marketing and positioning the downtown to succeed and com be competitive in the future. So what is it that differentiates Pittsburgh's downtown from Apex downtown or Siler City or Chapel Hill Harbor? What really makes Pittsburgh downtown special and <coughs> unique and, and attractive to people? Um, so that process will tease that out and, and come up with a strategy for marketing, promoting, branding downtown Pittsburgh. 
Um, we've also started a building inventory of the Main Street uh, buildings within the Main Street project area. Um, I've collected the square footage for those buildings from uh, County GIS. We're going to be tracking various statistics um, to provide to the state and also to provide business owners and potential business owners um, when they come to find out, well, what do you have downtown? Do you have vacant spaces? How much square footage? What's the lease rate? We can provide this to uh, prospective businesses that come through. Um, and then finally, just creating a really solid organization. I think we're, we're well on the way there. Um, I think my main goal for this year is to really have a sustainable group that's going to work well together, that's going to be able to accomplish things. That uh, we've had great attendance, uh, great participation, substantial participation, um, small focused group, but a committed group. So that's uh, I'm very pleased with um, with the group and, and um, excited about the work plan that they've um, adopted and are moving forward on. One other project that I didn't mention in here is a trip to uh, West Jefferson, and I think we have <coughs> transportation will probably be arranged through um, someone at Galloway Ridge who has a bus, but many of the members want to go, and, and we, the board is certainly welcome to attend that as well. Um, but go up and see some of the street state, street streetscape projects that West Jefferson's done, uh, which they've won numerous awards for, which DOT is very proud of. They actually took out a stoplight, and that saved DOT a tremendous amount of money. And they used that money to install um, bump outs, things that made the town more pedestrian friendly, slowed traffic down a little bit, and um, let people driving by kind of have a few more minutes to explore and see what the downtown had to offer through that slowing down of traffic. Um, but it's, it's widely lauded as a successful um, intervention at the state level. So um, we kind of wanted to go up and see that and see um, see what they've done so that we can learn from that community and, and possibly bring back uh, things to Pittsburgh from that. Well, that date's not been established, but I can um, let Mr. Grusbeck know to to convey to the board and, and uh, Michael Fioco has been attending the meeting so he can also fill you in but the more the merrier um, and I think we're going to try to do that on a Monday um, I think was the consensus last time um, so probably an all day trip I think it's a three or four hour trip up there is that right? Yeah. It's a lot of so yeah it'll be it'll be a trip but um, hopefully well worth it, so we'll let you know. Um, the other update with the Main Street program is the Facade Grant program, which is ongoing. And um, this is uh, Lundley's former law office now being um, taken over by um, Kathy Russell um, of Russell and Associates. And that was before. I think Mr. Farrell pointed out this one was a good candidate several months ago, and that uh, HVAC thing was a major attraction. And now that's gone. This is still in progress, but uh, the window decals look great. They're going to fill that in. I think with frosted glass, and they painted the doors and um, cleaned up a bit. But they're going to still continue cleaning uh, the face more. But that's that's the project that's going on now with the side ground program. And unless there are questions um, from the board, I think I'm done. Board, questions? <coughs> no, I would just like to mention, though, also part of the design, one of the four uh, points of focus. The design is also, uh, there's a group who is looking at the downtown vision plan and trying to find projects that we might be able to move on within that plan, flesh those out. Um, there was a presentation, I think, on three three days in the last two weeks to the business owners and property owners in and around the traffic circle to review preliminary design ideas for the, the quadrants that adjoin the traffic circle and how those might be impacted on changes 
to the circle. And I'm happy to report that everyone was pretty satisfied. And I think they are going to be nice improvements to those areas. Um, but everyone who attended was pretty satisfied. There were some, there were some comments made. The designer is going back to the drawing board, so to speak, and can incorporate those comments and then present them to the owners again. And then at some point in the very near future, I want to present it to the general public as well. So that is coming. It's, it's good progress, I think. Um, and so this design group is going to try to look at other projects that are identified in the downtown vision plan and see if we can find those forward. I know, Jay Farrell, you spoke about having some concerns about the narrowing of the traffic circle, and I think all the rest of us have heard from constituents as well. So I'm really glad that, to hear that, that the business owners felt that this was a, a, good, a good design. It did, it did. And I think key to that is no loss of parking. Right. I know as a retail business owner myself, I know how precious that parking is. Um, so I think there, on one of the corners there was an, an idea of losing two parking spaces, but only because there are four really nice trees that you don't want to deserve. Uh, and the, the, I understand that the business owners in that area were fine with that. So I, think, I think everyone's okay, but we'll wait until we see the final drawings. It's great that the process includes those business owners down there. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, since the Davy Street Cottages has been removed from the agenda, I wonder if the board would be interested in having a... Um, uh, Mr. Grusbeck, you had said that Chatham Park was here and would like to offer some degree of updates on, uh, on their project as well as to address the Special Assessment District that's going to come to us before uh, in the new business section of our agenda. Uh, as Mr. Dosandro indicated to me earlier today that uh, he had some brief updates about other components of the project that were, uh, uh, the Chad Park project in general, that were separate from the Special Assessment District discussion. So, Tom, would you be willing to... Uh, well, these will be very brief. But Madam Mayor and Commissioners, thank you for um, your time. Um, have, uh, I was going to mostly focus today on the Special Assessment District um, and was asked if we could just talk on one or two topics, so I'm not prepared to address everything that we're doing. Um, as you know, the, the medical office building is nearing completion and uh, should be ready for occupancy in a few weeks. Uh, which will bring, we think, about 80 jobs from the University of North Carolina Medical Center into Pittsburgh. I'm sorry, could you speak a little bit? Okay, sorry. The uh, medical office building that's under construction should be delivered in the next few weeks, bringing about 80 jobs into Pittsburgh, medical jobs, and bringing medical services uh, into Pittsburgh. We've um, I've separately been looking at uh, some interesting market research, by the way, on residential communities and one of the top amenities on a national level for what people want to see now, both swimming pools and golf, are medical facilities. Um, so for whatever reason, that's emerging, and we, you know, we're doing it for other reasons, but it's, it's encouraging to see that this is something we're highly prized right now by buyers. Probably the most important right now is that we're working very hard on the additional elements in the zoning and on the small area plan. Uh, we've taken a little more time than we anticipated. Uh, we are really giving them a careful <coughs> review. We have drafts of everything, but we're going through a very careful review because we realize that we all will be living with these for decades, and we want to make sure that what we submit to you is as complete as possible and has uh, been thought through as much as we can do so that we're giving you the best of our thinking. So. We're, the elements are a little bit ahead, and we hope to submit them closer in time uh, with the, um, the small area plan behind it. So we are working on these things. Uh, they are taking a little longer than we anticipated, but I think you'll, I hope you'll find they're more thoughtful because of the time we're spending on them. 
My primary reason for coming tonight was to talk about special assessment. Yes. If we, if we could, could we maybe pause there? Pause there. If you have any questions. Mr. Del Sandro or any of the other Crest and Development folks in the audience tonight. Um, the, um, I kind of want to keep those those discussions separate. I know Tom has a lot to say about the special assessment districts as well. So if I could pause there and when you're ready to close this item, then we'll have the next one. Just my recommendation. Okay, thank you. Other questions from the board for Mr. Del Sandro? I think anybody that's looked at the number of elements recognizes that they are not small elements, and uh, and so we're uh, <coughs> anxious to be waiting them, but we're also recognizing the enormity of the task. So, thank you, uh, Tom. In addition, do well. Do you include in the additional elements a draft of the development agreement, or do you identify that as a separate item? That is probably going to be a separate item. Okay. And do you have a sense of schedule on that? I don't. I think that's going to follow. That would be after these. It would be after the small area plan. I'd love to ask some questions about the additional elements, if I may. Okay. Okay. Um, and maybe this will get into detail, and, and we don't need to go into great detail, but if I could maybe just get some quick back and forth. Um, master lighting plan? Uh, is there some thought about um, helping to preserve the dark night sky in this part of the county? Yes. Good. Um, tree protection plan is what you're thinking right now more in terms of tree cover protection or specimen tree or both? Well, we're going to be speaking to both topics. I don't know if you'd say one is more than the other, but both, will be, both are going to be addressed. Okay. Um, On affordable housing uh, and the additional elements, um, are your thoughts there um, in terms of a spectrum of different offerings for different um, economic levels? Well, it actually is a spectrum. I don't know that we, I would say that there are different economic levels. I guess that would be one way of thinking about it, but we are looking at a, a variety of solutions so that it won't be like a one one size fits all. And we've looked at uh, some of the programs that have not worked, and I'm optimistic that what we're proposing will be effective. That sounds good. Um, I, I think that's all I'm prepared to ask. Thank you very okay. much for your response. You're welcome. Thank you. Other questions? Just a question, not necessarily you, but just I know that the other clinic in Pittsburgh that's going to UNC clinic, I understand, is going to be closing. Um, so is it the people that are there now are going to move to that facility? Is that I don't know what the, I, that would seem logical, but I don't know okay. if that's the that's case. I, I don't know. I couldn't speak that. for them. Other questions? Thank you, Vanilla approach new business and um, receive a, a request for the special assessment district and Brian Grusbeck I believe that you have the sort of overview of that, is that correct? Yeah, if I can set the table and not to keep uh, Mr. Delisandro standing there for too long and he's all, already warmed up and I'm still a little bit cold so I'll try to keep my comments relatively brief. You have before you uh, this evening uh, in your attachments, a, a, a short memo um, setting the table, and then also, too, I've included the, uh, a piece from the School of Government, uh, Coast Cannon's blog regarding special assessments in general. Um, so I'm sure you guys uh, have had a chance to go through that, right? And then also, too, uh, I included a PowerPoint that was used in discussion at uh, Chatham County Board of Commissioner meeting at least one that I know of and possibly more uh, as an informational piece about um, about the approach for special assessment districts from Chatham Park. Um, as, as I indicated in my memo, uh, Preston Development in Chatham Park is requesting the Chatham County Board of Commissioners uh, to consider establishing a special assessment district 
um, some of which have been allowed in North Carolina in a couple of different, uh, basically one, one basic format. This one represents a bit of a departure, but in general, special assessment districts would allow uh, a municipality, in this case the county, to levy and collect a special tax on properties in the Chatham Park development that would fund specific improvements for Chatham Park. And um, the difference in our case, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to simplify this, but the, the essential difference in our case, and uh, Mr. D'Alessandro will probably be providing more detail on this, is that um, typically uh, the, the special assessment would be used to pay off debt that would be incurred by a municipality uh, such as Chatham County. Uh, the difference here is that the developer would be incurring costs for certain infrastructure improvements and then using the special assessment to then reimburse a portion of those costs, less administrative fees, um, less interest um, that would be part of part of uh, the agreement um, over and then uh, and then assessed on the property over a period of roughly 25 years, I think, is the, not, is the maximum allowed by the, by the statute. The difference, um, our difference um, here, and um, our difference here and that the developer would be fronting the cost is what is not currently written into the legislation. Um, the state legislature would need to consider that change and in, order, um, in order for this model to move forward. The county is also considering this and discussing some other issues related to it, I believe in their mid-February meeting. Um, the board, their board, among other issues to, to, um, uh, to discuss, has requested that the town board weigh in uh, on the issue. Uh, and ultimately, uh, I believe it's, it's my impression that the county board uh, needs some sort of okay from the town board before they can ultimately uh, move forward on it. So my intention this evening uh, is to, I guess, begin this discussion, present the issue, um, and then uh, when and if you're, you're capable of making that decision, then we can certainly tackle uh, the issue. Um, it, at this point, I would, uh, I would turn it over to Mr. D'Alessandro to provide additional information uh, on special assessment districts from the Preston Development side. Uh, and then after that, certainly open up uh, for any other questions, comments, or concerns, and where and if appropriate, uh, provide direction for next steps for staff uh, and possibly to have as well. Okay, I think what I would, would add to what Brian said is that uh, we do not have uh, the district drafted. Uh, we do not have all of its provisions identified. Uh, the county is exploring uh, what the opportunities are, what the options are, what the alternatives are. Uh, so what they are looking for, to some degree, is your concurrence in their continuing this exploration. So they want you to know that they're exploring these issues, and just want you to be on board that they're exploring. So they don't have a definitive approach that they've settled on, or we don't have an agreement worked out with them, uh, but they want to give everyone here a heads up and, and know that you don't have any opposition to exploring the topic. So I wanted to step back and talk a little bit about assessment districts in particular with larger scale uh, real estate developments. Uh, they, are, they provide a method of cost recovery for capital intensive development projects which help to mitigate the cost of some of the upfront expenditures that often uh, have to precede a project. Assessment districts allow developers to accelerate construction, so you've seen the, the bridge going up uh, across 64. There are other infrastructure improvements, and I should say all of the money that is that is spent would be covering or recovered would be covering public improvements. So these would be not things that are for pri for the enhancement of the project by itself. They would be enhancing the entire. They would be enhancing Pittsburgh. They'd be enhancing Chatham County. They would just be located in and around Chatham Park. Uh, so these are public. This is public infrastructure, and we're trying to bring jobs into Pittsburgh, some of the money that we're trying to accelerate will help to attract companies uh, to Chatham Park. Uh, the, the, the district, the assessment districts, also enhance the quality of public improvements. And this again benefits people across the county, across the town. Uh, 
They're also a responsible mechanism for ensuring long-term public improvement plans. So they allow growth to pay for growth. And if you think about real estate, it is a cyclical business. This helps to smooth out some of those cycles and allow you to accelerate, again, public infrastructure expenditures. Buyers in special assessment districts understand that in addition to paying the purchase price for their home or their business or their land, they will also be paying the assessment for a period of time. A Chatham Park special assessment <coughs> district will have no impact on Chatham County's economic, uh, tax credit, or pardon me, uh, cut credit, uh, nor the towns, uh, and they will not provide any financial, will not present any financial risk to the town or the county. So special assessment districts also uh, allow us, the developers, to recoup some of this upfront money without having to rely exclusively upon land sales. So you know we're incurring quite a large amount of costs in launching Chatham Park. The special, the special assessment district allows some of those costs to be recouped in taxes or assessments over a long period of time and not in the initial purchase price. So all of the uh, public infrastructure that Chatham Park builds will be conveyed to entities that customarily own it. So we'll be building things that the state may get, the, town, the county may get, the town may get. Um, we've begun to explore this instrument with the county. They would administer it. Um, and again, as I said, they would like the town to support their exploration of this district. Mr. Nelson, mm -hmm. I'm sorry if I could just intercede just for a second. I think here it's important to maybe for the board um, to check in on the issue of Chatham County um, actually administering um, the special assessment district and you know what is the basis for that what's the reason what are the intended advantages of that some of the uh, and I don't I can't quote the specific law but some of the uh, provisions have to do with the scale of Chatham Park and the existing scale of, of Pittsburgh and so there were some regulations about, and I'm not familiar with chapter and verse, there were some regulations that spoke to the size of the sponsoring, or the, the sponsoring municipality relative to the, the size of the tax district. So that was the initial um, requirement we were trying to address. I, I'm, since I'm not an attorney, I can't speak specifically to chapter and verse, but we can, we can get the information. But Gary Joyner's here. We do have a trade. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Good evening, Ma uh, Mayor and members of the Commission. I'm Gary Joyner with Kilpatrick Townsend. And one of the reasons to asking the county to do it rather than the city to do it is because a lot of the property won't, is not annexed into the city uh, up front. And so the tax district would be created up front and at that time it would all be in the county but not would all be in the city and so eventually it all gets annexed into the city but not up front and so that's the reason <coughs> for asking the county to do the special assessment district rather than coming to the city to do it and so and then if you could also i guess help explain at what point would that annexation occur well the the annexation would occur you know, as the property is developed, as it, as it normally would into the future. But that wouldn't impact the special tax assessment district. So how long is, is this tax usually levied? Uh, and there's a certain period of time. Well, what we're proposing is that the tax would be levied um, into the future, but the repayment, of the, uh, the repayment would not begin until there's a CO on the house into the future. But a lot of the details of this, you know, are things that we need to work out with the county. And, and so we're here tonight just to talk about the fact that we want to explore this with the county and want to explore this as a mechanism so that we can accelerate, you know, the infrastructure that would go in. And so in terms of all the details as to exactly, you know, how it would work, um, I don't think we're, you know, want to get in and talk about chapter and verse of that. But at the same time, generally speaking, you know, you'd begin paying the tax once you moved into your house. That would not be limited to residential, though it would be commercial. Absolutely. As well. it, it would be, um, you know, you'd have a common rate across all the residential, but you'd have a similar common rate against all the commercial. So both, both commercial and residential would, would um, contribute. 
I know it would be prorated by some mechanism, but the master plan talks about 22,000 dwelling units. And what happens if you don't build 22,000 dwelling units? How do you, how do you prorate this? Well, I mean, the way this fee? really works is that uh, it's acknowledged up front that the developer is not going to get fully reimbursed. And so, you know, the developer is going to get reimbursed an amount, you know, based on the multiple of what the tax assessment that's put in place up front is times the number of houses that ultimately get reimbursed. The town, I mean, the, the county, uh, is basically just going to be an administrator of collecting that amount and, re and reimbursing itself for its first for its administrative expenses, and then after that, the balance will go to the developer. But there's no uh, there's no recourse back against the county if the developer gets a dollar or fifty cents, uh, you, you know. And so they will get whatever amount based on the number, uh, the amount of the assessment over the period of time. We're, we, the, the difference between, say, a special tax that might be ad valorem and an assessment is that we're setting the assessment as a, as a number. So it might be $500 per house. So what Gary was saying about the, the fact, maybe, but what Gary was saying, the fact that we are not, Chatham Park is not expecting to have this district reimburse it or re for all of the expenditures that would qualify. And that will be part of what the county and we work out is what is how is it qualified. We're not expecting it to cover it. It's a partial reimbursement. And so if we only built uh, the fewer houses we built, the less we would receive uh, as uh, 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 in the assessment. But the same with the commercial. So it isn't that it's spread out over evenly, but we're not trying to recapture all of it. Is there the opportunity during the course of the district to reevaluate? We really wouldn't revalue. I mean, you'd make a special assessment for you know a certain amount, call it five hundred dollars a house per year for you know that period of time. Let's say it was that amount. That's forty dollars a month, but it, it wouldn't be more than that. I mean, we we committed it wouldn't be more than forty dollars a month. But um, so but so that amount would not change. But we know that that amount, the amount of um, eligible reimbursables, you know, would be substantially more than that. So we're not going to be in a situation the developer will get more money than they had put in, in in public infrastructure. But at the same time, all of these are details that get worked out, you know, with the county as this sort of uh, gets put in place. Um, a couple of different questions. Uh, my understanding <coughs> is that there would be uh, fees levied not just on residences but commercial as well. Correct. Can you speak a little bit about some of your preliminary thoughts about how the commercial assessments might be structured? I, I think it's too early for us to get into exactly what the structure would be. I mean, we're just exploring this on a very preliminary basis up front with the county. And I see. So we really have not gotten into you know, exactly how that would be split or or how we come up what the model would look like. Okay, thank you. And um, question for Attorney Messick. Um, my understanding, maybe I'm wrong on this, but it's actually counties have the, the power to um, uh, implement uh, these types of overlay districts, but towns do not under no, state law. No, that's not correct. The town has the authority to do special assessment districts as well. Uh, it cannot do them in the ETJ, which is one issue. Uh, that's why the county is doing it. Uh, or are they talking to the county about doing it? Uh, and there may be something, I mean, all of it has to be approved by the local government commission, and Pittsburgh's financial stability and, and status is a lot less than the county's in terms of getting the LGC to approve it. But the town has the authority to do it. Hillsborough did it um, not too long ago. Okay. He, he's very correct. I have a question in reference to, you were specifically talking about funding improvements specific to Chatham Park, and then what type of improvements are you talking about specifically? And then you were talking about public infrastructure as well. So what type of things are you specifically talking about there? I'll oh, give well, me an example. Well, an example may be, um, there may be some bridges, roads, Bynum Bridge may be something that there's some 
improvements that are necessary uh, to, or uh, there may be enhancements to parks uh, that, that come out. So these would all be what we call el eligible reimbursable or eligible items. All those things would have to get worked out with the county as well and, and, and uh, in terms of exactly the definition of those. Okay. Yes. In, in this regard, many of the things that we're doing are scaled beyond just the needs of, of Chatham Park. So particularly roads, we have to accommodate through traffic. Uh, so it, the instrument will help us to accommodate the broader needs beyond just that of the, the community itself. I have a question too. Um, off of the UNC School of Government document, it talks about that um, under the newer authority, um, pay for capital project, a unit must first receive a petition signed by a majority of the owners of the property to be assessed. I just wonder what happens if they don't vote in favor of it. Well, we did vote in favor of it. We're the owner. Oh, okay, you are. Okay. The so it's not asking. Yeah. It's, 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 it's anyone buying homes or office buildings in the future will buy it subject to this instrument already being in place. Right, with full disclosure. So. So Chatham Park investors would vote in favor of it up front, and then after that, anyone buying would be fully disclosed as to what okay. they would buy. That's simple possibility. So given the, the, the idea that the tax district is going to have a payment for... Mr. Spielke, I, wouldn't, I, I think you, you're getting off on the wrong foot to call it a tax. It, it's an assessment. It is technically a different creature than a tax. Right. And it is an amount that is fixed at the beginning, and it's just paid over time. Uh, and it may be paid with your taxes, or it may be paid through the tax service, uh, tax administration of the county. Yeah. So the assessment overlay district. It's not an overlay. I mean, uh, it's not a zoning district. I mean, that's where the overlay is. But it's a, it is a geographical area that will benefit from whatever the public infrastructure improvements that they're talking about being reimbursed for. <coughs> it will be a defined area, and it will set out uh, an amount or maximum amount to be reimbursed, and then it will calculate based upon the type of development the amount of the assessment that will be paid back per unit, per house, per square foot, or whatever the, the, the formula is. So there's an area that will be subject to this assessment, which theoretically would be Chatham Park. Yeah, that way. And and I hear that the assessment period would be one of 25 years. That's the maximum. Probably. Maximum. And the start, when does that start? So we establish the area <coughs> of assessment and say from this date forward, the next 25 years, assessments may be collected from this area. But I might ask, we have one other person here working with us, uh, Thad Wilson of Municap. Okay. Maybe he can speak to how the, this instrument works. Yeah. So what, what I'm wondering is, you had mentioned that the assessment would occur upon the CO. Well, I know build out is thought to be perhaps 40 years. So that's beyond the 25 year period. Does the 25 year period float relative to in each individual property's assessment. Yes. The, right. The way this works is that the assessment is put on the property up front. So its repayment can go on for that period of time. The, the repayment doesn't start until there's a CO on the house. And so while the assessment is in place, it doesn't start to be repaid until there is a CO on the house. So theoretically, you, know, you could have an assessment that doesn't start to be repaid for 20 years, and then it goes on after that. Okay. Just to add quickly that um, the legal term in the statute is abeyance, and the state statute is um, probably imperfect on that right now. We're working with, um, working through a process to improve that, but assuming we do, the assessment will be under abeyance until a hurdle is met. Probably will be a certificate of occupancy or something like that. Another detail to work out that would effectively allow to use your term to float until the year it starts, and then the payment term would run for 25 years. That's the general plan right now. Again, more details to be worked out. Thank you. Are there other questions? Yes. Um, if I may. Um, Mr. D'Alessandro, I think that you were saying that uh, 
that these the, these financing the, uh, the the monies would be applied to broader needs, not just immediate needs. And uh, from my prior learnings on the subject ten years ago in public policy school, I, I gathered that. Uh, in other states where it is called a tax increment finance district or other language, um, these kinds of instruments can be applied to investments that are far beyond the district that's being uh, taxed or assessed. Is that? Well, I don't, I don't know that particular answer, but we, it would be the benefit of the people paying the assessment. Yeah, just briefly, so tax increment finance is, is another tool um, but that's not what we're talking about here. Um, to your general point of the public improvements, um, public improvements that qualify under a special assessment district nationwide, including North Carolina, other states we work in, and this is what I do for a living, those public improvements need to give a special benefit to the property that's in the district. Um, Generally speaking, that special benefit can come from a improvement that's in the geographic boundary, or it could come from a public improvement very close by that was necessary for the property in the district to uh, to exist or to be developed. But, but generally speaking, the improvements are in the district, in the circle, uh, but fundamentally the improvements have to provide a special benefit, effectively a, an extra benefit to the property that is in the circle. Tax increment finance has similar constraints in general, but, uh, but we're not in any way proposing for a tax increment finance district here. I can go into more detail. Well, that helps me because I'm trying to, to understand how we would differentiate between an uh, improvement project that, that helped out Chatham Park and, the, and, and that portion of that same project, which helps Pittsburgh's aging infrastructure, which of course goes hand in glove with what with what <coughs> needs to be done to make your development successful. So I guess my question you partially answered just now is that uh, is that all the improvements don't have to only be in Chatham Park, but they could be um, in the town of Pittsburgh. As they they could. They, the, the public improvements need to uh, be found to provide special benefit to the circle of land that is paying the assessment fee. Um, to the extent we all wanted to have a public improvement that was outside of the district that really um, does provide um, for the county to find that a finding that it provides special benefit to the land in the district, that will work. If, um, if somebody at the county came up with a an idea to you know, build a community center 15 miles away uh, that was not in the district, that just wouldn't cut mustard. I mean, might everybody want to do it? Might everybody might want to do it, but it wouldn't provide a special benefit for the land in the district. So that's that's a limitation that um, municipalities, counties have to follow in setting up these districts. Um, coming out from a slightly different angle, the public improvements that are in or near the district that are providing a special benefit to the property in the district that is having to pay, those are still public improvements. Those are available to everybody in the town, everybody in the county, everybody in the state, everybody in the nation. Everybody will still use those public improvements. Um, but the people who pay for them through the assessment structure will receive a special benefit, a benefit greater than property that is outside of the district. Everybody will get benefit, and, and the anticipation, the hope is to create public improvements that will be um, well used by the town, by the county, and, and really, you know, elevate um, the public realm for the entire, you know, for this entire region. Thank you. I have another question, if I said, please. Basically, here you indicate that uh, once, if that particular assessment was done on the Chatham Park area, that Chatham County would reimburse Chatham Park for a portion of the cost of the development. Is that correct? What portions are you talking about there, specifically? We're talking Have about the public determined? improvements. Mm -hmm. uh, well, as we said, we're at the beginning of an exploration, mm -hmm. so we don't have all of that determined. And there is a number, of, there are a number, 
as that indicated there are a number of regulations and requirements that have to be met to determine among ourselves what would work and what wouldn't work to be included. But uh, once something was identified as a public improvement that qualified, uh, then the county and we demonstrate and Chatham Park demonstrated that it had spent the money, the improvement was there, we had proven the costs, we, it would then be subject for reimbursement uh, through the proceeds of the assessment. And you would determine the percentage at that particular time? The percentage will really be when the percentage will really be what the tax assessment generates. It's not something we'll be determining. It's something we can calculate in arrears, but uh, we will we will know simply because uh, we're, there will never be a case where we're overcompensated, that we only spent X and we got X plus something back. That will never happen, in part because, as we said earlier, we are putting a cap on the assessment per house or per square foot of commercial space. There will be a, a cap placed on it. That cap, just given the scope of the expenditures we know we will have as Chatham Park unfolds, that cap will prevent this assessment district from generating enough money, even if we build every house and every square foot of commercial space, the cap would prevent it from fully covering the cost of the public improvement. What percent that finally turns up to be, we don't have all of the costs. You know, because again, this, these are things that we built out over time. We can only get reimbursed for money that's already been spent. So all of that will unfold over time. Uh, but when you say what percent, we really don't know because the total expenditure on public improvements over the next, you know, 30 some years with inflation and everything else, we're putting a cap on what we can re re receive. Uh, but uh, you know, we don't know. You know, it's it's a partial compens it's a partial way of recapturing some of the money we spend on public improvements. I guess more or less what we're looking for tonight is commitment from the town, the county to go along with this. We don't have any definite amount of monies or anything like that right now. So more or less the county, if I'm not correct, is looking for our support. Mr. Jensen, That's right. Does the board feel that they want to, at this point, express some degree of encouragement to the county to continue to explore? That's pretty much okay. the last one was simply okay. that we respectfully request that you support the county's exploration of the special assessment district. Um, I, I have uh, been interested in this kind of instrument in the past. Uh, I appreciate the clarification on the difference between this and tax increment finance districts. Um, and I'll be reading up on that to more carefully understand that distinction. Um, I have understood in the past that, uh, that uh, Similar instruments are, are good, but can be bad. The, the devil is in the details, and often I think it depends on what is the nature of the investments being made, and are those really going to pay off? What is our record? And, and again, maybe this isn't special assessment districts, but the example that I've read, examples that I've read, have been sports stadiums and entertainment districts, which don't ever pay for themselves. And uh, the kinds of investments that I think that I'm hearing about uh, do sound much more conservative and, and much more likely to deliver real benefits to our community and to the, the community that you'll be building, China Park investors will be building. Um, I would like to see some sensitivity to the structuring of um, the residential assessment to uh, reflect different income levels ability to pay that assessment um, and um, to the extent that the developers are contemplating having affordable housing offerings I, again I hope it's a continuum of offerings um, perhaps there could be consideration for waiving that assessment uh, for certain um, 
I don't know, price levels of, of property or income, I don't know how it would be structured. That's just an opinion I'd like to share. Um, thank you. Is, it, um, is this a, a Well, I, I'm just going to respond briefly to that. It's, uh, it's, it's typical in setting up special assessment districts that you have classes of, of property. Um, as an example, a, a very simple one is you often make a distinction between a single family detached home versus a town home, or you make a distinction between an apartment uh, or a condominium, privately owned condominium. Um, the outcome of those distinctions we typically just simply call classes, the so classes of property. <coughs> it is typical that the, um, as a general rule, the lower value ones, I meaning a town home costs 200000 and a single family detached home costs 300000 it, it is typical, and I would expect it here, this quantity size development, the um, lower value, smaller um, attached units would have a lower assessment. It is not likely that you would have a zero for um, a particular home. That would not be justifiable kind of the legal world of it does receive a benefit, but they will be, I would expect them to be staggered. We don't get to make the rules, the county and their attorneys ultimately decide it, but it would likely have that element to it. Um, so if, if such a, a special assessment district were established, it's possible that it would never have a qualifying um, investment that receives any district payments. I mean, there'd be nothing that would qualify as a right. public improvement. So that would be the next step. That if the district were established, still have to agree on a project that would qualify. Yeah, typically you would agree on that list of eligible projects as you create the district. So in the write-up of what the district's going to look like, meaning size, value in terms of what people are going to pay, at that point in time when you're <coughs> writing it all down and getting county commissioners to approve that you would identify your list of eligible projects. To the extent the world stopped and, and Chatham Park investors never started spending money on those, mm -hmm. then you wouldn't have anything to reimburse for, but you would create the approved list theoretically at the time when you create the district. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah, it really does. Thank you. Um, Tom, you had mentioned that this was a way to get reimbursement for some of the uh, infrastructure costs that the developer is going to make. And you made mention of the fact that not only was it in, you weren't only trying to recoup that cost via the purchase price, the initial purchase price of property within the development. So does that mean, does, does that translate to property being sold at less than market value because there is this premium on this payment? It, it, I guess I'd say one way of, this may, that will probably ride when I say this, but I mean, it, it, I view it a little bit as almost when you buy a house and you pay some of it in cash and some of it you finance through a mortgage. Um, and if you say, well, you have to come up with 100% of the cost at the time you buy the house in cash, you know, the, 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 you would see less. So this is a mechanism that does two things. One is real estate is a cyclical business. So to the extent that we have a more stabilized refunding mechanism for the public improvements. So we're still completely at risk for all the private development. We have a little bit more stability in the reimbursements on public improvements that we have to do up front. You have to do them in advance often. So that gives that allows them to be accelerated and it allows them to be higher quality. Uh, but it also allows that we're not talking about being below market. If you think about all of the things that are in the elements and all of the things that we want to do in terms of sustainability and all of the things we've talked about, we may have a higher cost structure. So that this allows people to buy a house that, let's say it's $25,000 assessment that they get to pay over 25 years at 500 a year, obviously change. If that's, instead of paying the extra 25,000 to move into the house or to pay the extra whatever for the office land, uh, they get to get this piece of it they pay over that period. So 
it's not in addition to, if you will, um, it, it is it is a way of smoothing out some of the reimbursements of the public improvements. So you still have all the private risk of private development, but that piece of the development that are public improvements that we're going to accelerate and bring up front, that piece has a more stable mechanism for reimbursement. Pleasure of the board. I think I just have one more comment, not necessarily a question, but I would certainly be interested in seeing that list that you were referencing earlier, and hopefully that list would include some capital projects such as schools and fire department, police department. One of the things we're doing is we are already we've already committed to giving land to Chatham County for the schools. So that is, rather than saying we're going to take money and uh, build, add it to bricks and stone and mortar, we're giving them the land, that is equally valuable. It's a capital cost they don't have to face. Yes, I'm aware of the land. And that is a cost of land that ultimately has to be borne by the homeowners and the commercial developers when we are pricing the model. So, but that is one that is not recovered in, uh, in this district. The land. Yeah. Yes, but I was re referencing possibly the fire, uh, fire department and police department mm -hmm. structures such as that for capital project. Mm -hmm. I'd be interested in that as well. And one thing I would say, we'll look at the list. One of the things I would say is remember, we're not getting recouped even all of our costs yes. just for the roads and some of the other major, the basic infrastructure. So this is not as though this instrument has a lot of capacity to go beyond some of the things that are just the fundamental infrastructure that we have to do. But we'll put the list together. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I understand that there may be this metric that says the town can't administer this program. Uh, there's another statement that says can't do it because the property's in the ETJ. The, the master plan contemplates that all of the land will be within Pittsburgh's municipal corporate limits at some point. These will be Pittsburgh citizens. And so I want to make sure, I mean, I'm open to the idea of using this as a tool to accomplish the goals of the master plan. But I don't want to relinquish, I don't want the town to relinquish control relative to the county. And so I'm open to the idea of exploring this idea, but I think it needs to be plugged into the master plan, the additional elements, the development agreement. How is it a tool that fits within that construct that we have today? And how can we use it to achieve those stated goals? And, and I think have an interlocal agreement between the town and the county. The county is not going, you know, is, is going to look to the town at every step of the way as to how this program gets implemented. There absolutely would be an interlocal agreement. Uh, yes, that would be an interlocal agreement. And the infrastructure would be owned by the appropriate uh, party. Well, I, I'm, I'm <coughs> open to the idea of um, continuing the exploration. And to that point, the, the county manager has indicated that an in, in, interlocal agreement would be necessary for infrastructure that's created under the, under the umbrella of, of this mechanism. The other so thing that, that's that out there. Okay. The other thing that I would I would I feel the need because this has been, been used twice in the state of North Carolina, and it's never had this wrinkle that you're referring to that requires a changing of legislation. You know, this is first time I've really tried to think through this thing, dig in, and, and I need a lot, of, a lot more help, and I need time, um, and I would like for staff to, maybe we have a work session with our board to work through it, and you give us your guidance and ideas and advice. Um, I, I think we could do that too. So, um, yeah, I, I like the idea of seeing if we can. Mm -hmm. I, I think what we were asking, you, you know, and obviously you'll continue to look at this as you sort of move forward and as this whole thing moves forward. 
part of what we were asking though was for just to get your acknowledgement to the county that, that it's okay for them to be doing the same thing, the same exploration. We've all got to explore this. We, we've got to go through the legislature and get a couple of tweaks. So there, there are numbers of things that have to happen. What we're trying to do though is get back in, in line so that we can uh, sort of get the balls rolling, so to speak, so when the legislature comes into town in the end of February or so, we hopefully can, can have something or, or start to get something in front of them that, that we can ask them to uh, make some tweaks to the current legislation. So that's sort of why we're before you tonight is, is to get you to acknowledge to the town or to the county that uh, yeah, you're okay with them exploring at the same time you are. Am I hearing correctly, though, that we don't feel that we're ready, either because of detail or or further cooperation with the county, that we're not in a position at this point to recommend a particular direction? I'm totally in favor of them pursuing this county, personally, but I like also like that even more session as being a part of, you know, ongoing. But I, I, to me, I don't have a problem with what they're going forward with. I don't have a problem with them simply exploring it with no final decisions, but exploring it and bringing off what they have found back to us so we can look at what they have found and also have a work session as well. And keep in mind, again, as we said, there will be an interlocal agreement that you will be a party to. Right. So it's not as, you know, this is, this is uh, not going to be something that you vote today and you don't see it again. You're a, a part of it. And some of it is actually to cover costs of building public improvements that will be deeded over to the town and other completed. Okay. Do we need that in the form of a motion? Yeah, I'd like to be clear in my communication with the county. I'm not sure what it is. Hmm. Anybody like to develop a motion? I'd like to make a motion that Chatham County explore the Special Assessment District in Chatham Park Plan Development District ex for exploration purposes only. You've heard the motion by Pamela Baldwin. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Jay Farrell. Is there further discussion? Uh, discussion. Um, with due respect, Commissioner Baldwin, I'm not sure that we're able to instruct them, uh, so we might want to tweak the language somewhat if you could accept a friendly amendment. I'm I not sure if that's proper procedure. That. Um, uh, I think we need to speak to our uh, purposes and our actions and our uh, stance um, that, that Town Commission supports county exploration of this instrument. I think when I made the motion that say we would allow, would in favor of them exploring that, that that lets them know that we do support that. Is that not true, Mr. Smith? I, I thought that's what you said. I'm okay. not sure how it back come down. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> but if you want, I can certainly answer that and say that. The town supports that exploration and that exploration of this request of this uh, special assessment district in the Chatham Park Plan Development District. The exploration purposes only. Well, we just said for the exploration purposes only. Okay. And I can do, I can say though, once they have completed their exploration to report the results back to the <coughs> Pittsburgh Town Board of Commissioners. Yes, I like that. We can speak to report on what they've. You've heard the amended motion that the town supports the county's exploration of a special assessment district in Chatham Park's master plan, and upon completion of that, the results should be communicated back to the town. Second. That Wilson Foley seconded. Is there further discussion? Those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 
Those opposed? Five to zero. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thanks for the information. The manager's update on projects is next. Mr. Grispick. Thank you. Uh, we talked quite a bit about Chatham Park tonight, but um, so, uh, as you're aware, some informational meetings were held at the downtown Hillsborough office. Uh, Channel Park and different occasions were attended by members of the county and town board, and county staff and town staff, trust and development representatives. Uh, the most recent one, I believe, Mayor Sanford attended. Uh, I think it gave a pretty good opportunity for everyone to, to receive updates on where they're at, and then also to uh, Mayor Perry um, did, did request that at that point the press and development would provide quarterly updates to the town board of commissioners. And, uh, uh, Mr. Delisandro's update tonight is is um, is not one of those quarterly updates. Um, the uh, um, that will be the, uh, the the tone and content of those will be discussed in a little bit more detail uh, in some monthly meetings that. Uh, I'll enjoy attending with Preston Development. Uh, Mr. Jones, the town planner, and I met with him uh, back on January 20th. Uh, we went over uh, an update and um, got the lay of the land as far as uh, some of the more pertinent issues uh, that were discussed at your meetings, so to speak, uh, that you had over at the Pittsburgh office, but also um, some more granular stuff like where, uh, where we're at with um, uh, the elements and uh, small area plans, but then we also got into this special assessment district concept uh, as well. Um, we're looking forward to those at least once a month, and, um, and we'll have more information for you, uh, I think, after each one, and we'll continue to update you on those. Uh, Sanford, sanitary sewer line extension. Um, you will recall that, uh, that the town submitted an application to the Clean Water State Revolving Fund Revolving fund for short uh, for a loan to refurbish the water, wastewater plant and to extend uh, wastewater treatment uh, force main to uh, Sanford's wastewater treatment plant. Uh, the purpose would be to provide an additional 2 MGD uh, in wastewater capacity um, as well as provide obvious uh, needed upgrades to our, our existing wastewater plant. Um, I received word that the uh, State Water Infrastructure Authority uh, met last week and provided uh, formal approval for the loan amount of $21,585,500. Um, we'll be receiving a letter, a uh, formal letter, uh, shortly. Um, I, in, on the same issue, I uh, met with uh, Cal Hegwar, uh, Sanford City Manager, and Victor Zara, the Public Works Director. Uh, in Sanford regarding next steps uh, for an agreement. And uh, Mr. Uh, Hegwar uh, will be discussing those next steps with, uh, with uh, Sanford's uh, City Council. Uh, I believe the Mayor of Sanford also indicated, uh, uh, I guess, some background uh, to you folks as well at the, the meetings at the Preston Development Office or at the Chatham Park Office uh, here downtown. Uh, and so we'll be uh, we'll be looking forward to the next steps on that one as well. Uh, no movement for, uh, unfortunately on affordable housing. We had to reschedule some of that. Um, we'll be uh, getting back to you as, as we have some dialogue with Triangle J. Um, and we'll be looking to do that on February 1st. Um, we talked a little tonight a little bit about additional elements. Um, we're looking forward to getting those, I believe, in mid-February, and then small area plans will be submitted shortly after that. Uh, unified Development Ordinance, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jones can elaborate or uh, go ahead and throw something at me if I'm, uh, uh, he needs to get my attention here, but I believe that uh, we've had some progress with Module 1, met with the Planning Board, met with the Technical Advisory Committee uh, after, after that, uh, and then we look forward to meeting with um, the joint meeting of, uh, of the town board, the planning board, mm -hmm. uh, in the near future, and I don't know if we've... We haven't made much movement with that, um, scheduling of that, but I will be looking for an email from me to sort of start working out some times that we may be able to sit down with the planning board and, and this board to have a joint work session on, on Module 1. 
And then I believe we're also looking at a public forum. Yes, after after, that. after all the boards have met and we kind of got a good annual marching forward, we're going to have a, a public workshop on module one, uh, and that'll be scheduled hopefully here in the near future. I'm wondering if it makes sense to have that prior to the joint meeting because there is a lot of feedback out there. That well, I'm, I'm getting folks feedback. Are not feeling like they they're well, all. I'm getting good feedback from the advisory committee who's okay. getting feedback from the public, and that's how it's supposed to, to operate. Um, that's the pleasure of the board, but I, I, I kind of feel like I want to have you all educated on Module 1 prior to the public coming forth. And it's out there, it's been out there since December for the board to, for the public to read, to call me and chat about it. Um, so, irregardless of a public workshop, it's available for, for public comment. Um, you know, that's kind of uh, where we are at, with it right now. I think that with a public workshop, you can guide people through it because I think you know you're in a, you deal with that yeah. language and that yeah. those types of documents every day. But it's Greek to a lot of people. Yeah. So and it's Greek to even the planning board members and the advisory committee members. So there's some some things that aren't sort of <coughs> reads just well for me because I've I'm, I'm mm -hmm. been in this world for a long time, but even folks who are on the plan board and the technical advisory committee don't read it as, as planners do and they have questions as to that. So I want to understand all those details and questions so I can be prepared to answer and address some of those things that aren't easy to read, and then, then we'll, we'll meet with the public on that. Um, but yeah, I think, it, I think it's working well. I'm getting a lot of feedback from the advisory committee members uh, and the plan board members. I've gotten a couple of detailed um, notes from at least two advisory committee members and a plan board member so far. So, so far, so good. And we had that advisory committee me meeting last Tuesday. I know the, the public forum is, is really important. Yeah, and it won't be missed. Yeah. Make sure we get it advertised well because getting that message out is, is a challenge. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, wastewater inflow and infiltration project uh, moves forward. Uh, the uh, leaf hydrostructure is, uh, is, is working out a plan. Mr. Royal pushed, managed to. Uh, 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 managed to work with the state in pushing back the deadline uh, on that uh, March 1st, I believe. And um, so when so when that deadline arrives, we should have repair plans and specs developed. Um, we'll have an idea of, uh, a better idea of when we can begin construction. Um, and and just, just as a reminder, that process and, the, and those fixes are going to be critical, I think, to really you know, taking up the slack within our existing system. Um, Fred and I were going over, uh, we're going over um, flow numbers today at the wastewater plant. There's a tremendous amount, what, what appears to be a tremendous amount, uh, an eye-opening amount of, of uh, stormwater that is treated by our system. And uh, I think, uh, I, I don't want to call it low-hanging fruit because this is obviously taking quite a bit of work. Uh, low-hanging fruit, I think by definition, correct me if I'm wrong, is easy to pick. And <laughs> in this case, there's been a little effort gone into it, but once we once we have it, um, certainly is a, a heck of a lot more cost-effective and economical than building a plant to accommodate, say, anywhere where of, uh, upwards of 100 to 150 uh, thousand mg <coughs> per day, which is, I think, some of the gain that we're looking at uh, with these with these future fixes. So. Uh, we'll continue with that. On a more micro level, the Salisbury Street storm <coughs> drain uh, issue, uh, the fix that's over by the uh, Episcopal Church Cemetery, uh, where we, uh, up until, were we affected by Jonah or were we affected by snow, Mageddon, I'm not sure which, but whatever the bad weather, however you want to refer to the bad weather of last week, we were held up a little bit by that. Uh, but the concrete box, if you want to walk by it, was actually dropped down into the hole, replacing that 
brick and sand and mortar structure that was there before. Uh, at the time I was putting putting this update together, we were waiting on a lid. Uh, then we'll put additional fill material in, put a temporary patch over, and then we're going to get asphalt people in to completely, uh, we want to actually repave Salisbury Street, that stretch of Salisbury Street, some additional stretch as well, um, once and for all. Um, but uh, So we'll continue uh, to work on that. I think um, uh, there, there was a little bit of work for, I, a little bit of communication back and forth with uh, the church on the on the old wall that's there, and so we've been very, uh, I think, sensitive to that issue as well. Um, and, um, and again, going to replace a hole. I think that it's been there so long that, that nobody's really noticed it until uh, until very recently, unfortunately. Um, Weather also got in the way of executing an agreement with uh, Mr. Roberts at Chatham Mills. Uh, the, uh, Mr. Roberts was having to come down from, uh, uh, from Hillsborough apparently on the day that we had planned to get together, so we have to reschedule that. And then finally, um, uh, one last thing before I tap out, the board retreat date, as you recall, we did set uh, for Thursday, February 11th, uh, from 4 to 8 p.m. Uh, our facilitator is available. What he's suggesting uh, is, that, is that we consider, given that we're working with four hours, uh, we consider um, either an option that would have continue to have department head presentations, uh, or uh, given that we've got some new board membership, uh, go into uh, board member uh, board member concerns and sort of uh, and sort of do a what probably is more of a conventional retreat format. And so. I can I can go either way on it. Um, staff at the staff meeting, my pre previous staff meeting, we, we discussed it a little bit, and if we went with the four-hour format, um, we would just simply be shortening the staff presentations. And obviously, the the, num the number and the, the amount of questions and discussion follow each staff presentation would have to be cut down uh, unless we were to consider a, a date on top of uh, February 11th. So it's it's really it's really up to you. We can go either way with it, but pretty much everything is in place except for that little tweak with format. If you choose to go in that direction, so if you don't want to stop and think about it, get back to me on that. That's fine. Don't feel like you've got to wait down the time. Well, we do have a little bit of time, so if people think about the the format. And my and John never having been through this before, I'm not sure what would be most beneficial. Maybe you all can advise us on what you have found beneficial when you were starting <coughs> your tenure on the board. Those of you who well, are I, I'll be honest with you, I'd like to have a, uh, I would like to have uh, supervisors here just for a short <coughs> discussion with the upcoming budget because, you know, what they're looking for, just something short, a couple minutes, and just straight to the point. So we could, so we could get, so, okay, each, each department typically would go through, okay, these were our accomplishments for the last year, so they'll for, for the upcoming year. And then, then they might get into a discussion of budget items. Um, if I hear you right, maybe one idea would be to just go right into a discussion of what our budget needs would be um, from each department head. Mm -hmm. I actually Wait. like hearing what they've been doing. And to me, that part portion of the retreat is really helpful to find out what the staff has been working on. <coughs> I have to not have that part. <coughs> Yeah, it is tough, and it's a nice update. Uh, given the given the time given the time crunch, I'm just throwing this out there, as an option, or I'm just throwing a couple ideas out there. So, so if you guys want to chew on that, then go back. To this one. I think it is valuable input, um, but I do think for, you know four hours. I think will go by quickly. Are you gonna make it longer? Team yeah, we, we, I think we can agree to, to try to refrain ourselves from bringing up concerns unless they're really uh, flaming hot. Yeah. Based on what we've heard. Okay. And make notes, copious notes, so we can deliver those in writing. Yeah. Okay. 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 Ye
and we can and we can come back and, and set a time for a later date if you want to if you want to get. Since we have new members, I think it would be really important if they heard from the department head so they get the general okay. idea. Super. Without having our final agenda item, there are commissioner concerns. So I'll turn it over to the board. Uh, any concerns that you've heard from constituents that you want to draw Mr. Bruce Beck's attention or the attention of other department heads that are here tonight? Hmm. Commissioner Farrell, do you have concerns? Uh, not at this time. That was the only I've got a couple of concerns, and it's not necessarily uh, relative to constituents, but uh, I think it uh, has, has to do with the UDO when we were first presented. I think Clarion made mention of all the stakeholder meetings and all the meetings they had. And at that point, I was curious to know what those who attended those meetings, and, and I, they agreed to provide that information, but I don't think they have. And um, I know in an email two weeks ago, I when I could not make this meeting, I reached out and asked if we could get that information. We don't have it, so we'd like to follow up with that and, and have that list because I think it's important to know how we're going to get from A to B, and that was A, who they met with, what they talked about. So if we can get that, and I think it would be helpful for our cause. And the other thing is I'd like to go ahead and, if we can, set up this workshop for the Special Assessment District. Maybe we would follow up with an email or the uh, website that you used, um, Brian, to pull everyone's availability and, and not just say that we want to have a workshop and, and let it go. Let's, let, I mean, we really need to dig into this. Um, I think it's critical. That's it. What's your thinking? Is the county meeting or not? I think right now I'd just like to better know what our staff thinks and analysis and we can keep it just to us for now. But I mean, ultimately, yes, we're going to have to have a lot of coordination with the county. Do you want to open? I do not have anything. Thank you. John Bush? Um, yes, so uh, Nancy Emsley's departure uh, has really stuck with me. Um, and um, I'm hopeful and optimistic we're, we'll be getting someone equally good or better. Um, my concern is that uh, I think that we're grappling with a lot of things right now, contemplating significant growth, um, preparing for uh, development agreement with Chatham Park investors, um, anticipating their investment in very significant, really large infrastructure investments that we will then own and have to maintain. And I would like to have a better understanding of our prospects for generating revenues uh, in the future. And so uh, I expressed this in an email, Mr. Bruce Beck, that um, uh, I'm eager that the new person would be, um, the new finance director would be comfortable with the kind of modeling I think that we need to understand a full array of scenarios for revenue into the future. Um, and um, I guess I just wanted to express that concern. Thank you, John. If there is nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved. By uh, Jay Farrell, seconded by Michael Kiyoko. Those in favor, please stand. Oh, I'm here. Nice to meet you.